Hello everyone, in this 18th lesson of how to make your first game in Unity we are going to create a main menu and start linking some more scenes together. Before we get into it remember to subscribe to see more and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload. It really, really helps me out. Now on with the show. So a main menu you could think of as being as simple as creating that pause menu that we've created but on a slightly larger scale and that requires an extra scene in itself so let's go ahead and create a new scene so file new scene and let's save that scene as main menu in our scenes main menu now there are many different ways of creating a main menu and I don't think it's necessarily a right or wrong way of doing it. I think it's probably something that you could work with but all I'm going to do is I'm going to create something very simple and have a couple of our little animals just there in the background. So I don't want to waste too much time designing a background because you can probably do this yourself but essentially all I'm going to do is create a couple of game objects. So a large cube, let's have that centered. Let's zoom in so we can see it. There we go. And let's change the scale to, let's say, 50 by 50. So it's quite long. Let's go ahead and fix our lighting. So window, rendering, lighting, and let's click on generate lighting. There we go. And now let's apply a material. Let's just have a red material. Uh, I might create a blue one as well and have that as a background. So let's duplicate that red material, blue material, and let's just quickly change it to a blue color. Let's duplicate this cube, and I'm going to have this as 50 tall, and in fact I'll keep it that way and I'll have it kind of as the background that way. And let's have that as blue. Let's take a look at our camera. So that's currently what it looks like. So our main menu coming together somewhat reasonably well. So let's put our little creatures in the scene just to add something extra to it. So mesh, let's have uh, the chicken. Let's turn him around, bring him to there. Our dragon, let's have him, in fact, we'll have him as that way. Drag him out of the ground a little. And the condor. So let's have him facing that way. Maybe up here somewhere. Oh, hello. There he is. So I'm going to drag the camera out to about there. Move it across. Bring it up. It's probably about there. So that is basically the background of our main menu. And you can have it as a UI image. You can have it as moving up. You can have it as anything realistically. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, so maybe we should add some quick animations to these guys. Uh, I think it would probably be a little better. Um, so let's add the move to there. Let's add a move to there and move to there. And they should now start flapping a little bit. He's bobbing up and down. <laughs> Okay, so it's up to you what you want to do. Um, if you want to do exactly what I've done, fair enough, but let's get into actually making some of the main menu itself. Now, the way I want to design this is I want to have um, like a bar coming down here that's slightly faded with some buttons on. Uh, and again, it's entirely up to you what kind of method you want to create here. So let's go ahead, go to game object. Let's go to 3D, not 3D object, UI, because this is all UI based. Uh, and let's go raw image. I want to anchor stretching all the way across, uh, up, sorry. And let's have zero, zero. Let's zoom out so we can see. Uh, I'm gonna change the color to black and change the alpha to 100. And I'm going to use my rec tool and just bring this out to about there and place it there. Maybe a little bit more this way. So we also need to set the canvas here to scale with screen size, which means we might need to bring this back a little more, shrink it a bit. 
and we'll set this as 1920 by 1080 and we'll set it as 0.5 so it's dead in the center. So it'll scale to any screen size that people are running. Okay, so now let's create some buttons. So let's go game object, UI, let's go button. Now this button will be start game, so start button. And let's zoom in and let's refine it a little bit more than what it currently is. So I'm going to have this one as the first button at the top up there. Let's make it a little bigger. There we go. And let's play around with the font size because it is a tiny bit small. So let's have this as 36 and we'll have play game. Now the button itself, let's see what we can do. Let's have normal color as a dark, deep, greenish kind of color maybe. And let's also have the text as white so we can see it a little better. So when we're hovering over, so highlighted, it's currently a very light color. But what do we want it as? I think we should have it as, let's have it as black. So highlighted color, let's go with black. So whenever our mouse hovers over that play game, it will turn it completely black. And obviously if it's not hovering, it will go back to its original color. Cool. Uh, pressed color. So whenever we press the button, we want it to change color. Let's have it change to, let's have it change to a lighter green. So again, if we press play, we should be able to see. Cool. So now you can see that it is indeed selected and it has turned um, kind of a grayish color, but that doesn't matter too much. I think we should have the selected color as a deep gray rather than a light gray. So you can play around with these color settings as much as you need to. Um, you can obviously go a lot further with this. You don't necessarily have to just stick with these colors. There are many, many different ways you can deal with buttons in Unity, and it is definitely worth you know, playing around with them a little bit. You can also change this to maybe different types that you want to see, make it a round button if you want to, but you can also apply your own sprites to this and make the button look exactly how you want to. Seems we're going just for simplicity here. I'm not gonna worry too much about that, but by all means, you can if you want to. So the next button that we're going to have is going to be a load game button because, yep, we're going to have saving and loading in the series. So let's hold control, press D to duplicate that button. Let's bring it down to there. And let's change the text to say load game. And let's change the name of the button to load button. And finally, let's have quick game button. So duplicate, let's bring it down to there. Let's have this as quit button and the text quit game. So whenever people have had enough and they just want to quit the game, boom, press the button, done. Let's change the colors. So load game, let's have that as a bluish kind of color. Um, so a light blue color there. And quit game, let's have that as a reddish kind of color. There we go. Let's press play and have a look at this now. Cool. So what else can we do with this? Well, another thing I've noticed with a lot of menus, not necessarily these days, is they have like maybe a bar at the bottom with some information on. Let's create one of those. So we can duplicate this raw image and let's change the anchoring so it stretches across the bottom right there. And let's place this uh, down the bottom and let's just realign it with our rec tool. Bring that to there and across to there. And that's how it'll look there. So maybe we can have some text along here saying, you know, what level we're currently on or something like that. So for now, what we need to do is we need to get these buttons working a little bit, at least the play game button. So the load game button we will work on um, when we get around to saving and loading functions. And obviously we'll 
code the quick game button this tutorial as well but it won't actually work just yet because the quick game will only work when you're in the application itself rather than the engine so let's go to our scripts folder right click create and let's go c sharp script and this will be main menu so everything that deals with the main menu will be within this script there we go so what do we need here well there are three buttons so it means we're going to need three separate methods let's get rid of void start and void update but let's add in using unity engine dot scene management semicolon so let's start by creating those methods public void start game open close bracket open curly bracket the next one is going to be public void load game open close bracket and the curly brackets and finally public void quit game open close bracket open curly bracket so let's start with the quit game this one is real simple it's just application dot quit open close bracket semicolon so all that will do is whenever we are in the application itself so when we've built the game and when we're running it if we press that button it will indeed quit the application but it won't do it in unity like i say because that's the engine it can't physically quit the engine so let's do the start game button and this one is real simple this is just going to be scene manager dot load scene and i'm just going to have the two brackets there the parentheses and semicolon and save our script i know it's going to give us an error but we now need to play around with our scenes just a little bit so we're going to have before this scene a splash screen as well so theoretically the main menu is now going to become scene number one and i think we'll probably end up changing it in the next tutorial anyway but for now i'm going to go to file build settings and click on add open scenes so now you can see that we have zero one and two and like i say i want main menu to be scene one by the end of the next video and i want our splash screen to be scene zero by the next video which is obviously what we're doing then which means that our main scene which is still called sample scene which we'll end up renaming will eventually become scene two and respawn will become scene three so that's just a quick heads up of what we're going to do but for now all we need to do is make sure that play game actually works and it takes us to the correct scene so let's go zero and save and that will indeed take us to the correct scene so let's head back into unity that error should disappear down the bottom and it does so now let's press play and play game oh just realized we haven't actually set the button there's a good example of the button not knowing what it needs to do so let's go to start button and remember that we need to add this section here but we also need the game object with the main menu attached to it so game object create empty and we'll call this menu control and let's attach the main menu script to it and we don't need to declare any variables because there aren't any but let's go to start button let's click on plus let's drag menu control over let's click no function main menu and start game and while we're at it we may as well set the quick game as well so plus menu control no function main menu and quick game and now let's try this out so main menu all good let's play game and there we go straight to our game so next thing we need to do is sort this button out quit to menu let's sort that out now let's go to our other scene which is oh that's very handy i forgot it creates extra folders there for you so don't worry about that if you do see extra folders appearing that just relates to the menu itself because we've basically generated the light so don't worry about that uh, let's go to our main scene yes save changes on that one 
and let's go to the canvas and let's go to pause menu and the quit button is what we're dealing with here remember so let's make sure we go into our pause game there we go and it's going to work the exact same way as what we've done here with this restart level so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy that method place it down here and we'll put just quit level obviously we need the time scale back to one we can't keep it a zero and we do need to have the scene as currently two but like i said before we will change it when we've got everything in place so let's save that script head back into unity and let it compile let's go to our quit button click plus drag globals across no function pause game and quit level and now let's try this out there we go and we are back at our main menu so that will inevitably just cycle all the way through whenever you click the buttons now so we have all that set up so in the next video what we're going to do is we are going to create a splash screen and we're going to jig around our scenes to get them in the final correct order so everything is displayed as intended so and before that next video work on your main menu a little bit you don't have to have it as simple as mine mine looks very plain and simple if you spend you know even twice as much time as what i've done doing it you can make yours look a hundred percent better than what it currently does right now so until that next video thank you very much for watching guys